With me now is Sydney Johnson Sharf, gymnast for the Florida Gators. How are you? I'm doing great. Good, good. I appreciate the time. So I was on the USA Gymnastics website uh, last night. And I checked out your profile. It is a little bit outdated, but we, we have to talk about some of your answers here. The first one, your favorite uh, interest, favorite subject was science. No. Favorite food, <laughs> raspberries. No. But the one thing we agreed on, favorite movie, The Longest Ride. I love that movie. <laughs> yeah, those are kind of outdated for sure. Um, I think I answered those when I was in high school and I wanted to do engineering. And then once I got to college, I started doing all my classes for mechanical engineering. I was doing great in classes, but I'm like, this, this is not it for me. <laughs> so um, I'm actually doing digital arts and sciences. I want to go into visual effects for movies. So that's kind of my passion right now. Very cool. Very cool. Well, please tell me the longest ride is still your favorite movie. Yes. <laughs> Good. It's a phenomenal movie. Nicholas Sparks. I mean, Jesus, that's like my dream interview right there. <laughs> so you started gymnastics at the age of three. Walk me through some of those earliest uh, memories for you. I love asking this question. So, yeah. So um, I actually, when I was three months old, I got kidney surgery and I didn't have much of an immune system. And the doctor was like, hey, it'd be a good idea to get around some kids. And so my mom owns a gym as uh, she was an Olympian. Mm -hmm. and she, I was always in the gym anyway, so she decided to put me in the little mom and me classes, and I ended up loving it, and I just remember being a little ball of energy that just liked to dance, I loved to perform, I loved to tumble, so that's definitely stuck. <laughs> was there ever a moment in time when you realized, and you came to the realization that, holy crap, I really can, can take this to the highest of levels? Yeah, so coming up through the levels, I've had a lot of fear, I've had a lot of struggles, and my mom has helped me through all of it. And I think the moment that I realized like I could really do more than what I'm doing is when I made it to the Nastia Cup in 2013, and I got there and I saw the arena, and I'm like, this is what I want to do. And I knew that Elite would take me to those kind of competitions, so then that was like immediately when I changed my goal to wanting to go Elite. I'm sure that was amongst uh, one of your highlights, but walk me through, and of course, the best is yet to come and whatever you pursue, but, but walk me through some of your most memorable moments uh, thus far. Um, I think one of the biggest ones would be in 2015, I, when I made national team for the first time. Um, that meet was actually kind of interesting because during podium training, the day before the first day of competition, I had a really bad crash on beam. And I didn't know if I was going to compete or not. And I was like, you know what, I'm here. I have nothing to lose. Like, I just want to try. And I ended up falling on beam both days because of my injuries, but I somehow made the last spot on the national team. And I will never forget that. Like I had pushed so hard for the rest of the competition, knowing I'm like, I had two falls. Like I have to do my absolute best for these rest of the events. And I think just the lessons I've learned from pushing through things throughout my whole elite career um, it's definitely something that I'll carry with me for the rest of my life and I'll use every day. <laughs> Badass. Well, that's absolute perseverance. So in a Florida uh, Gator feature, uh, you talked about having a lot of pressure in the past because people kept asking if you were trying to be like your mom, who, as you said, is an Olympian. I've always loved your response. So I'm trying to be myself. I'm trying to find myself and trying mm -hmm. to find the athlete that I am. Have you discovered yourself? Have you discovered the athlete that you are? Actually, very recently, in the last month, like my whole life has just kind of changed in like for the better. I think my confidence has grown. I'm, I went through a lot of struggles freshman and sophomore year just with injuries and health. And I just like wasn't sure if I was like the same gymnast I was. But I think coming back from COVID and coming back from quarantine and seeing how well even as a team we're doing coming back and how quickly we were able to come back I think that just like really boosted the confidence level and I'm just realized like look I am good enough like I can do this and I think that's been the biggest thing that's helped me realize like look I love to perform I want to have the confidence to show that and I think I'm definitely in a great spot with myself with that Awesome. I'm super glad to hear that. You just posted on Instagram celebrating that our first meet is exactly one month away. How does it feel? These are some exciting times. I 
competing is my absolute favorite thing to do. That is the reason why I do gymnastics. So whenever season comes around, I'm always super excited. What has training looked like during COVID? I know you've, you've been back to training for, for quite a while now. Yeah, so the only thing that's really different is we're staying six feet apart, wearing masks in between turns. Obviously, like, it's kind of hard to do flips with masks because, you know, yeah, peripheral yeah. vision and all that. But um, we've just been taking a lot of steps just to make sure everybody stays healthy, and we've been doing a good job so far. So it's not anything that I'm super worried about, but it's been – the training has been the same, which right. has been good. Yeah. Has there been anything specifically that you've been working on uh, for this upcoming season? Um, I think I just started working on the details earlier, so I'm getting all the finishing touches on there now with things. I have been, uh, you know, I, I've not been to, to a gymnastics summer camp in quite some time, but I was a, a five-year gymnastics summer camp participant. I've been trying to learn the halfback flip, uh, and mm. it's really dangerous. You know, I don't advise anyone trying to do it at home because basically <laughs> halfback flip is when you jump back and you fall on the top of your head. It's uh, oh. It is uh, not too fun. I've had about like seven concussions from it, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've talked to so many gymnasts, Betty Okino, Morgan Hurd. You'd think that I would have like the uh, training now to be able to like make a little bit more than a halfback flip, but nope, it, it's just not worked out for me. <laughs> so your freshman year did pose uh, some challenges, as you discussed. Sophomore year, you did kind of kill it. What did you adjust moving to your sophomore year? Was it really just because of injuries that kind of, you know, uh, made your freshman year a bit difficult? Um, so freshman year, let's just go through from freshman year and what happened. So I was dealing with health issues, like severe health issues. Um, I had something called leaky gut. I had holes in my intestines. So it was a whole, that was a whole thing from medication I was taking that I had a reaction to. But I got over that. And right after I got over that, I had a chronic sinus infection the entire season. So like it was a it was bad. So I was just not doing my best and I was not happy and I was not able to train at my fullest. And so I was like really upset about how that season went. I think I only competed four meets on one event. And before they took me on, they're like, look, like you're not doing great right now. <laughs> Which I don't blame them. But I think coming back sophomore year. I went back that summer to the gym and I didn't even, I didn't take a break. I didn't take a vacation. I was just like, so like fired up. Like I wanted to prove that I was at Florida to compete and I was there for a reason. And I think that was the kind of fire that I came back with that I knew I'm like, I'm going to make myself valuable to the team. And I feel like I did a lot better job with that last year. You must have learned so much about yourself, uh, and it probably does relate back to that perseverance over your freshman year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I definitely learned all the different things that I can push through and what I'm willing to push through, and I think that's definitely helped me, even in training, like if I'm not feeling great or if I'm feeling off, I know I can still hit it if I need to. Absolutely. So what are Gators fans going to see from you this upcoming season? What should they expect? Hopefully, vault, floor, and beam. Those are – I'm doing better with them. <laughs> Definitely floor and beam, but I might actually be making the vault lineup this year, but we'll see. Ooh, exciting. Yeah. We, we have to go back here for one sec. Walk me through a typical uh, training day. What does that day look like? I was on your YouTube channel, so I kind of saw what a typical mm -hmm. day looks like for you. Uh, walk, walk, walk us through it. So as a group, we all come together first and we talk about announcements and we all get in our little circle and we talk about the day. And then we have one person per day that comes up with a quote and a word of the day. So they say their quote and then we chomp on the word of the day. And then we warm up and stretch and we do conditioning and then line drills. And then we split off into our groups and we do three events a day. We do vault one day and floor the next day. So we alternate the leg days. Um, but we do beam and bars every day. I don't do bars, <laughs> but um, I do my extra stuff during bars. Um, and then after that, we normally stretch as a group and then we come together and we break it down and say good job and all that. <laughs> Yes, yeah, Cindy, I also have a very uh, tough training day. I walked up and down the stairs in preparation for the interview, and I'm feeling it. I'm very sore. And also, of <laughs> course, as you know, my, my, my yard work yesterday was very difficult. <laughs>
Yes. <laughs> Sydney, I appreciate the time. I'm really looking forward to this upcoming season. Uh, I'm going to leave the floor to you. If there's anybody you'd like to thank, uh, how can people find you on Instagram? Uh, all that stuff. Yeah, so you guys can follow me on Instagram at Sydney underscore Johnson Sharf. Um, TikTok, Sydney JS10. Um, those are a little cringy, but you know, you can still follow it. Um, my YouTube channel is just my name, my whole name. Um, and yeah, I just want to thank my mom for being the best coach growing up and Kelly for being the best coach growing up. You guys have been my biggest support, support system. Um, my whole family in general has been behind me the whole time supporting me and just telling me to do what I love and they've made me who I am today and I just want to thank the whole Gator staff for supporting me through all of my hard times and still believing in me and pushing me to be the best that I can be and um, I definitely wouldn't be where I am today without any of them. Wonderful and before we go talking about TikTok so I just got myself a TikTok and I don't know what I'm supposed to post you know, I'm pretty funny, more funny looking. I don't love dancing, so, so I'm not going to do any of that stuff. Uh, you know, I have no idea what to do on TikTok. Do you have any advice, any tips? For me, I'm not big on the dances either. I think I've posted like one or two, but I can never really get into them. I'm more into like real dancing. So like the TikTok dances, I'm like unsure about. Um, I just post random things. I post... Um, a lot of the trends where it's like posting like baby pictures of you, um, like the glow ups. I post a lot of those. Uh, I post a lot of gym videos. Uh, people really like tumbling videos. Um, Do people like tumbling fail videos? Actually, yes. There, I've seen a lot of them that have blown up. I think I know what I'm going to do. 